Okay. So we're through departures. Michelle got <laughs> Michelle got the full search. Every bag. Every bag, and everything. Me. And Michelle. <laughs> it happens. But uh, we're all through, it's all good. So pretty much at every airport that we've been to around the world has these seats, just a little sign on the seat, please don't sit here. So you can at least put your bag down on the seat. But no, not Heathrow. Heathrow's decided they'll spend, how much do you think they spent on these signs? Honestly, how much money was wasted on these plastic signs? You know, if, you, if, if, if the government find a way of wasting your money, they will do. Tens of thousands of them would have been printed. Just to make people's lives a little bit more difficult when they're traveling. <sighs> it's madness. Got to calm down because I don't want to get stroppy about flying so early on. It just annoys me when I see government wasting money at this sort of volume, you know, when they're actually throwing thousands and thousands of dollars at uh, producing this nonsense. I think there might be a drinking water there. Huh? Yeah. Okay, so... We're in Germany. Which city are we in? Michelle, what city is it? Frankfurt. <laughs> We're in Frankfurt. I don't know. I'm just flying to Australia. So we've got to go to B48. And uh, it's a long walk. We've, we've been dropped off straight in what feels like the departure lounge which is unusual for a transit. And then uh, <laughs> we're just walking. Might as well be walking to Japan at this rate. And what do you think of Frankfurt Airport, Michelle? It's big. It's, it's big. It's really badly laid out. We have been walking and walking. There's no, um, can we go that way, Michelle? Uh, keep going then. Very badly laid out. To start with, we had to come up some staircase with carrying our bags because there was no elevators. That wasn't so good. So we to Terminal 2, Bereiche D and E. This skyline takes you to Terminal 1, concourses B and C, as well so, as to Terminal 2, now we're on a little train. D. And with the usual Australia, yeah, permitted. Long way. <laughs> permit. trying to get home. <laughs> okay, so that was embarrassing. Apparently, now in Germany, you have to empty every cable, every everything out of your bags, not just your laptop, everything. So, because I said our oh, bags are full of electronics, they unpacked everything out of our bags piece by piece in a very aggressive manner okay we've been here about an hour now and this there's, there's, we've also got the Paralympics um, uh, going over for the uh, Paralympics in, in um, Japan but also, you can't hear it. The announcements are in, intangible. You can't work them. You can't hear them at all. Literally impossible. So nobody seems to know what's happening. We think we're getting on the flight at 105, but um, uh, nightmare. Michelle's not feeling too good at the moment. She's not too happy. Okay, so we're getting on board. This one? Yeah. Oh, the Japanese are lovely, lovely people. Reminds me just how much I love Japan. So we're getting on the plane. So it's a 12 and a half hour flight. 
we've got our seat. <laughs> we've got a seat in the middle. So, uh, yeah, 12 and a half hours, hours to Tokyo, and then we've got 14 hours in Tokyo. Okay, so we're um, just arriving in Tokyo. Is that Fuji out there? I think it might be. So there we go, we've got uh, Tokyo down there and Mount Fuji in the background. Beautiful. Anyway, we've got 14 hours in the airport and then um, final leg to uh, Sydney. Pretty tired. Got about an hour's sleep, maybe 40 in. Um, 14 hour flight. Okay, I'm, I'm unusually, we're first off the plane, transiting. So we've arrived in Tokyo Airport. Lovely big quiet airport. And um, there's places just over here to fill your water bottles for free. Learn rest of the world, just a nice, really clean modern bathrooms. I might take you in there, have a little look around. And then um, up this end, there's a load of restaurants that are open, which we'll take a look at later on. Got the udon noodles and there's a bar, so lots going on. Look at the eateries here, it's beautiful. There's a store here doing uh, okonomiyaki, takoyaki. Not bad prices, about sort of 700 yen, six, 700 yen for um, okonomiyaki, 670. Um, takoyaki is 670 yen. Um, Michelle and I have gone for some udon noodles, which uh, are about, about 1100 yen. Let me just show you. We get a lovely bowl of udon. It is so nice to be back in Japan, Michelle. It is good. Just the food is, is, is for me, is really appetizing and really delicious. Mm -hmm. Just thinking about having a big bowl of uh, udon noodles now. I mean, I'd love to have a nice tonkotsu ramen, but I don't think they have it here. But, um, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's looking good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm just going to... Is it? I've got to try this broth. So what you would tend to do, first of all, get it on mass, and then I'm gonna get my udon, I'm gonna put them into my broth. Now you can put the broth into the, into the udon, and you slurp it. That is the right way. Yum, yum. Oh, that is so delicious. We've got this lovely, coddled egg here. I call it a coddled egg. It's what I would call a coddled egg. Slightly soft in the middle. <clears throat> silky, silky smooth. Now Michelle's going for the, the other way around. She, she's putting her broth in with her udon. Is it udon or cold? Udon needle, noodles, udon, udon noodles. Gosh, I haven't said this for a long time. Are cold. And the broth is hot. So look, I'll just grab some, dip it in there. Mm, that's delicious. That's good, isn't it, Michelle? That's very good. I mean, it doesn't matter which way round you go, everything tastes good. The sauce is like a rich beef gravy almost. Um, it's probably possibly pork and maybe it's got 
some soy sauce in there or maybe I'm not 100% sure because I don't know I don't know what udon we got here it's got a little bit of pork a little bit of pork a uh, little processed the pork it's not fresh as it would have been if we bought it outside in a, a proper restaurant and they've got some mushrooms in here and they've got um, the egg of course possibly some bean shoots oh, that is so good anyway stop filming now we're going to enjoy it so it's a nice big airport but it's mostly closed a lot of these stores are closed it's obviously a lot less planes flying and we're in the middle of the day or late early afternoon so it's not like it's three in the morning or anything how hard it is to do business so when you come into the airport here, you can get your water bottles filled up with these great little units. You've got um, cold water and hot water. You just press it and hold the button and it will fill your water bottle up. A lot of airports don't have that facility. This is the restroom area. There is a corridor in front of you to the left. The men's toilets are located on the right-hand side of that corridor. The multi-purpose toilet is beyond that. The women's toilets are located at the far end on the right. So these toilets are not even being used, but look, you got, um, Four automatic wash hand basins. Simple, put your hand underneath, the water comes out. You've got these nice men's urinals here. Ladies, you get to see the urinals. They're these low urinals, which I'm not over keen on, they're a bit, uh, bit old fashioned. And then in the, the toilets themselves are just amazing. I mean, I think the girls are even more so, but they've got um, little bum cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> they're probably heated as well if you've got a heated toilet seat um, nice big look at the size of these huge toilet stalls so each one one two and then this one's a, a disabled access one and then down here won't go down to the ladies but here you've got a, a children's and parenting changing room so there's a place for doing you know sitting your kids diapers what do they have here like a, a low level wash hand basin for the children um somewhere you can wash your hair and that's what it's oh no don't wash your hair <laughs> don't wash your hair what is that unit i'm not sure somebody have to let me know and then on this side You've got a disabled toilet with your bum cleaner and your sort of bum dryer. Every, everything's on here. It says, don't, please don't stand on the toilets. Very cool. Only in Japan. Japan's one of the few places you can go into a convenience store like a 7-Eleven or a Family Mart. And the bathrooms are immaculate. That you don't even mind using them. They're at acres and acres of power ports so all of the seating along here has usb and plug-in power adapters the whole airport has pretty good wi-fi which is completely free um, a lot of airports around the world could learn from this so let's have a little look see if the travelators are working because they generally switch off when they're not being used so as i walk through here it should click it on, which it, which it is doing. And it's accelerating. So there are these drinks machines where you can get Coca-Cola, iced coffee, um, different types of tea and fizzy drinks. And there are TV screens all around showing NHK World Television, which is kind of cool. And we're on the Travelator which is working and there are ample toilets. Look, one just here, one just there. The K-1 
cafe is definitely closed. Would have been just over here. So I'm gonna do the long walk back. I will just check. Yes, if I look on here, see you are here. The cafe I was heading to should be just here actually, a little bit back from me. So cafe's closed. <coughs> I'm going to speed up my walk back by using the Travelators. What a stark contrast to Frankfurt Airport, which was awful. No Travelators. No, no escalators even. When we arrived at Frankfurt, we had to carry our bags up a flight of two flights of stairs. Um, and then we had to walk for miles upon miles. Literally, I reckon we walked for about a good 20 to 30 minutes before we got uh, to our aircraft and it was all of it not good not good Frankfurt Airport oh and I should add the baggage the baggage check staff in Frankfurt were awful oh there that's where the cafe was so that's where the cafe should have been and it is closed Yes, they were quite horrible in Frankfurt. Um, the staff there were aggressive and rude. And um, they, we, we took our laptops out and uh, put our phones and things into a separate box, but they still wanted every cable out of our hand baggage. And because we didn't take every cable out, they literally took 25 minutes and opened every single thing in the bag and laid it all out for Michelle and I all over a big area. So it took us, they took every single last thing and unwrapped every single last thing in our baggage with a very smug and aggressive mannerism, the girl that was doing it. She was uh, pretty horrible. And um, it took us a good 15, 20 minutes to put it all back together because we don't always unpack everything when we're traveling. We've been traveling for a long time. Yeah, they were very rude. And the girl said to me, oh, it's because of 9-11. Can you believe? She actually used 9-11 as a reasoning. And she said to me, they do this at all airports. I'm talking to someone that's been in dozens of airports over the last couple of years. No airport does that. Maybe your laptop phones. No airport completely strip searches a bag. And I have to say, I wasn't good. I wasn't particularly polite. I wasn't rude, but I wasn't, certainly wasn't polite to her or any of the other staff there, to be honest. So I think at the moment they are using the upper wing. This wing of the airport's being used. This wing of the airport less so. So as we come up to where we're actually sat, Michelle and I, there are more restaurants and more shops open. Let's have a little look at these dispensers. People are always fascinated by these. So what can you get out of these things? It's 200 yen, little necklaces, little knickknacks, sort of game boards, characters. These are chains on a chain. Um, some little models, cards I think, I'm not sure, more pendants. So it's mainly sort of little anime characters, nothing unusual. Let's come around this side, you get this little ball comes out with your character in or whatever. Oh, so this one's doing miniature sandals, flip-flops, tape measures, a miniature cleaning set. So this isn't a real cleaning set, this is just a miniature set i have no idea what that is <laughs> just in case you want a miniature garden hose set of course who would travel without one these, i'm not sure what these are little wooden characters maybe nothing overly bizarre look i'm saying nothing overly bizarre miniature garden hose and on this end i think it's mainly more anime characters on chains or otherwise. Okay, that's enough looking around Tokyo Airport, I think. We're one hour now till, till, till takeoff. 
and the girls have started to arrive in the check-in there's only uh, one two three four five six seven maybe seven people at the moment so there's probably a few more to come one would imagine actually there's a big crowd walking up here could that be for us and uh going straight by <laughs> Hello. Okay, so we're um, heading down. There's the second people, third people onto the plane. There's only about, uh, probably about 10 people on the plane. Hey. 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 We're not allowed, we're not allowed. No, no, we're not allowed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So they they've opened them for us. Opened our baggage holes up for us. It's kind of nice. There might be somebody over there. We've got a, a line of seats each. Everybody's starting to get ready for takeoff now. So yeah, I think because this is actually quite a poignant moment, this means we're getting home, you know, we're going to see the family after two years of being stuck outside of Australia. That This really has brought it home. I was a bit sort of a, you know, I can feel the emotions getting a bit strong. Everyone says I'm a bit of a softy, but there you go, nothing wrong with that. But yeah, this is, uh, you can see Michelle behind me. This is the, the last leg, nine hours straight to Sydney. Well, not the last leg, we're gonna have to do two weeks quarantine, then we're gonna have to fly again from Sydney to Melbourne. But at the end of this flight, we'll be on Australian soil. So, yee Ladies and gentlemen, we will now explain the safety features of this aircraft. So could we please have your full attention? Cabin attendants wear masks and gloves to reassure passengers using our services. Also, we may wear goggles during meal service to prevent infection. For all passengers' reassurance, we kindly request that you take measures to avoid the infection, such as wearing a mask or facial covering, washing your hands, coughing in a suitable manner, Please refrain from removing the mask or facial covering for a long time to eat and drink, drinking a large amount of alcohol, and talking loudly at close range. ANA has installed the latest filters on the air conditioning systems of all its aircraft. To unfasten, raise the flap. Electronic devices emitting radio waves cannot be used on board. Smoking and the use of all smoking devices is prohibited in the cabin, including in the aisle and lavatory. We will now explain the emergency equipment. Oxygen masks will drop down when necessary. Pull the mask firmly towards you, place it over your nose and mouth, and breathe normally. Ladies and gentlemen, we have landed at Sydney Kingsford Smith Airport. The local time in Sydney is 8.54 a.m. Please remain seated with your seatbelt securely fastened until the captain turns off the seatbelt sign. Health professionals will screen all passengers when you arrive. You must do what the health professional asks of you. Officials will transfer you to a bus for Australia's mandatory 14-day quarantine period. This applies to all travellers, unless you have an exemption or are an official traveller. The government will provide you and your family with suitable accommodation for your quarantine period.
bus, we don't know where we're going uh, into the city, the driver said. So, uh, all good.